What's up, Mustangs? This is Miss Gaffney. And Miss Hibbard. And we are here today to do the iron sulfide lab with you. So first we're going to go over the different materials that we're using today. We're gonna to start with a beaker. So we've got our beaker filled with water. We have a test tube and a test tube rack. We have two spoons. We have magnifying lens, a test tube holder, Very nice. A micro burner. We've got the two elements iron. Those are iron filings. And sulfur powder. A piece of paper. And a digital scale to measure mass. All right, Mustang, so now we are going to measure out the amounts of each of these um, elements that we need. Miss Gaffney, how much sulfur do we need? So for sulfur today, we need four grams. Okay, before we measure it out, let's take a look at the sulfur. How would you describe the physical properties of this? Um, well, it is yellow. It's very soft, so we know that sulfur is brittle. It's a non-metal. Ooh, it's really smelly, very smelly. Powdery. Powdery. All right, cool. So we're gonna measure out four grams, you said. Okay, so I've got my scale turned on and we're gonna use this paper so we're not putting sulfur right on the scale. It's got a mass of 2.37 grams, but I wanna start it at zero. So I'm just gonna press the tear button, there we go. And now we're at zero. And I'm going to scoop some sulfur onto the paper and we're gonna to try to go over four grams here. Let's see, I don't wanna to do too much. I'm not quite sure how much it's gonna, oh, we need a lot more than that, okay. I'll just, you can see those numbers going up. And it doesn't have to be perfect, perfect, but we want it to be pretty close. So I'm getting closer. Okay, that's pretty good. Maybe I'll take off a tiny bit. That looks pretty good, 4.05, nice. that's really close. Yeah, that's real close. Okay. All right, now we've got our iron filings. They're in this little um, container right here. And Miss Gaffney, how would you describe the iron filings? Well, at first glance, um, it's dark. It's kind of a brownish gray color. I know that iron is a metal. So in the form that we're used to, like an iron nail, we know that it's malleable, shiny, um, it's a good conductor of electricity. And one of the things that we learned is that iron is magnetic. Let's see if I can make this work through the tube. We can definitely show you on the paper when we put it on the paper. So we'll do that in a second. All right, so we need seven grams of iron. So same thing, I'm gonna put my paper on the scale first and then I'm gonna hit the tear button to zero it out. And then I'm just gonna start adding iron. Now iron's a lot more dense than sulfur. So even though it seems like seven grams would be more than four grams, you don't need that much. So I'm gonna try and pour it really slowly and get to my, or seven grams. Maybe not that slowly. <laughs> do, do, do. What we don't wanna do is just like have a whole huge thing come out and mm -hmm. have to put it all back. Getting close. Okay, we'll take that. Pretty good. All right, wow, it's almost the exact same. So while we have it on the paper, we can show you the um, magneticness of this iron. So I have the uh, magnet under the paper and I can move the magnet around and you guys can see the iron filings move. So definitely this is iron, it's magnetic. It's one of its physical properties. All right, Mustangs, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mix the iron with the sulfur. So Miss Hibbard here is gonna carefully pour the sulfur on top of the iron, and then she's gonna use the back of the spoon to make a nice mixture. Now, if you recall from a few weeks ago when we talked about physical versus chemical changes, a mixture is simply a physical change. How could we, we said that a physical change, a lot of times it's reversible. So can anybody think, while you're watching this video, think to yourself, how we could get the iron separated from the sulfur? 
I know, Miss Hibbert, I know. <laughs> All right, what's the answer, Miss um, Daphne? Well, I know that iron is magnetic, so I could run the magnet underneath to separate the iron from the sulfur. You're exactly right. So that proves that this is a physical change um, and we're not making a new substance. We're just, these are just mixed together and we can take them apart. And you can start to notice there is a little bit of a color change, but that's expected. Yeah, it's more like, um, you know, if you mixed black and white paint and you got gray, this is like mixing a dark brown and a light yellow. So we're gonna get kind of a gray. Ms. Hibbard, do you want to show them what you mean by separating iron from sulfur? I sure do. I was look, just trying to get it mixed a little nice. bit better. Look how nice. Look at that good mixture. It's so homogenous. <laughs> good word, homogenous. Can you spell that, students? <laughs> and yes, Miss Gaffney and I know that we are cringy. And we don't <laughs> care. All right. So I've got the magnet here. I'm going to put it under the paper so it doesn't get all crazy. And I'll show put it a little closer. Ooh, that's really and cool. And I can pull Look, that's awesome. the iron Look at that. out. And I mean, obviously, if we really needed to separate it out, we could get it better than that. But you can see the iron moving around within the mixture. And uh, so there we go. Now I need to remix it because oh. I pulled that iron out. Oh. But we'll go ahead and do that, and then we'll come back for the next step. All right, we're back, and we've got this nice mixture of the iron and the sulfur. And what do we need to do next, Miss Gaffney? So now we're going to pour this mixture into our test tube here. Um, that's not really an easy feat to do with this flat surface. So we need to make kind of a funnel out of our paper. We could even use another piece of paper if we wanted to, to make a funnel. I don't think I need to. I'm really okay. good at this. I've been doing it for years, but. Miss Hibbard's an expert. Watch me say that and then I spill it everywhere. <laughs> expert funnel maker. We want to fill up the test tube about a fourth of the way. Now I'm feeling nervous <laughs> that I'm going to mess up. Okay, I think I'm making it pretty well. I'm just going to pick it up here. Here we go. Tell me when. I think that's good. Okay. So we've got our mixture in the test tube and uh, we're just gonna set the rest aside. We can maybe do it again later. <laughs> All right. Now, now for the fun, the fun part. part. Yeah. <laughs> and this is where um, we'll be wearing our goggles. Because mm -hmm. we're going to be dealing with fire. All right, so this burner, it's got some butane gas in it. And when I turn this, you can hear the gas and then there's our fire. Nice. So we're gonna use these test tube clamp, this test tube clamp, and we're gonna clamp it at the very top so we can be farther away from the flame. And we're just gonna be cooking, kind of, cooking this substance in the fire for a little while, about five minutes. You can already see though, you can already see it turning black. Get it closer, what do you think? We could maybe zoom in on the camera. Okay. Yeah, can y'all see that there at the bottom of the test tube? It's changing color. Ooh, interesting. I see another noticeable color change. Look at the, above the mixture of iron sulfur, you can see that it's now starting to turn yellow. And that is a gas that's being created. Um, the gas, it's the sulfur mixing with the oxygen in the air and it's creating sulfur dioxide, which is actually kind of a toxic gas, um, but it's such in such small amounts and we've got the windows open that it's gonna be okay. Got our mask on. Yeah, our mask is helping us filter that out. Ooh, Miss Hibbard, well. I see some gas coming out of the top of that test tube. Yep, definitely. That's a sign of a chemical change. We're gonna let this heat and we'll probably speed up the video a little bit um, and then we'll slow it down for the last part. This next step, we're gonna turn off the gas and we're gonna immediately drop it woo, into a beaker of water. 
Oh no, our test tube broke. What, Miss Hibbard? Just kidding, that was expected. Yeah, <laughs> we knew that was gonna happen. We wanted that to happen. The reason the glass broke is because it was so hot and then it was submerged in water, which is fairly cold. And so the difference in temperature just makes the glass break. But that enables us to access what was in the bottom of the test tube. So I'm gonna carefully make sure it's cool enough. I'm gonna pull that out and Whoa. we can now see the new substance that we have created. Ooh. I'll try to wiggle it out of the glass. There we go. Ew. So this is our new substance right here. It oh, is called iron sulfide. Um, it's kind of that same gray color that our mixture was, but now it's a full solid. It is not magnetic. Let's grab a magnet. Where'd our magnet go, Miss Gaffney? There it is. And we can see no. if it does anything, it doesn't react at no all. No attraction. So we also know a new substance was created because we saw the color change. We saw the fire. We um, cannot separate this out now with a magnet anymore. So this is a brand new substance called iron sulfide. I like how shimmery it is. Yeah. You'll see how it has kind of that iridescent yeah. look. And that is our lab. Thanks for watching. Thanks, y'all. Thank you.